Hi, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we have another little project and as some of you might have seen already I'm using on my lathe for my turning I'm using braced carbide tools and I make them myself. I use a piece of cold rolled Miller slot in it and then I'm brazing a piece of carbide which is in fact the shank of an old carbide end mill into it. Here you can see it pretty good. All the way along here is the braced in carbide. And then I just grind it down and give it a good hone and they're, they keep their edge pretty good and they're very very cheap and I don't like inserts in my shop for the lathe except for a few um, special tools like the parting blade. That's something I like the inserts very much but for general purpose turning I like to grind my own tools and <clears throat> as we're 2015 I evolved from the high-speed steel up to the carbide <laughs> and that's what I'm using now and somebody saw that on my pictures and or my videos and asked if I could make him a bunch of those inserts uh, of those lathe toolings so here we are I have prepared six pieces in fact we will make five six pieces uh, five pieces of cold rolled six by six square we will mill out a pocket in front here then we're going to brace in a piece of carbide these are four millimeter carbide end mill shanks and it's a pretty tough, uh, gra fine grade of carbide that can take quite a bit of beating. So they hold a very fine edge while turning. So we'll make um, three right hand tools and two left hand tools. Okay, I have a white parallel in my vise that's a bit uh, a bit smaller in width than my pieces altogether and I'm ganging them up because I don't want to clamp them all individually and cut them all to length by one. So I'm aligning the pieces just by eye or for the sake of it with a with a square clamp it down and run a six millimeter three fluid carbide end mill along the end face. Okay, we turn the whole stack around and now we're facing off this side. Okay, I'm not going for a particular length. I want just the ends to be square with the rest of the... Um, to be turning to everything up to cut out the notch for the carbide to go in. Uh, I put a stack of pearls under my part. I have to stop back here and I'm using the same 6mm 3 fluid carbide end mill. We're running it at about 2000 rpm with a feed of 200, no, with a feed of 100 millimeters per minute. Depth of cut 2.8 millimeters and side engagement 2.8 millimeters. So it's just a roughing cut. Um, there's absolutely no need for precision in this operation. It's just a pocket to house the carbon. Okay, that's it. That's the whole milling operation on these pieces. So after that it looks like this. 
the surface finish is not too bad and yeah it's just a pocket to solder something in okay I have all the blanks for the lathe tooling done and there's still a chip in there now we're going to silver solder these carbide pieces into there as you noticed or may notice um, I made them all the same the decision if it's a left or right hand tool will be made when I grind them because if you take a look at the face my cutout is symmetrical so I can use them that way or in that way it's it just depends on the grind so let's go over and do some solder. Okay, I dragged out my little portable um, oxy fuel rig that consists of a way too short hose, two little bottle of oxygen and these um, disposable propane fuel canisters. And this rig has served me very well right until now. It, uh, it's not super high quality, but um, it absolutely gets the job of silver soldering saw small pieces done, and I'm very happy how it works. Uh, also, the two little oxy bottle lasts pretty good time in my shop. I don't do that much of of uh, silver soldering or brazing. Okay, I'm going for a very generic temperature flux that's as usual dried up okay just added a few drops of water and stirring it up uh, and using a good amount of it on the pockets I just machined in there there is no need to clean the parts any further because the surfaces are freshly machined and I didn't use any cutting oil. Now for the carbides. Just seat them in there. And now we can use our torch to heat the part up to the right temperature and then use the silver solder to uh, solder the carbides into the shanks and I mean one millimeter silver starter without the flux coating. I don't like uh, the, f the coated f uh, the flux coated silver solder. Um, I have a hard time to use it. it always the flux always melts away before I get to the part and I don't like it. Just add a bit of silver solder. Okay, I dropped the turning tools into some hot citric acid to get rid of the flux and the staining from uh, silver soldering. Okay, we're back in the shop and we have rough ground, the carbide, so it's flush with the top of the tool bit and uh, pre-ground the side rake. Um, I did this outside because I didn't want 
Mm, the whole carbide dust mess in my shop and uh, yeah that's the reason I did it outside and also it was a nice sunny day so that's okay. Okay. I have set up my tool and cutter grinder with the, the holder for lathe tool bits. I put in one of the lathe tools. I set the lower joint for a um, side rake of 8 degrees and we're going to grind the side of the tool. Okay, this is the side rake of the tool bit and as you can see with this fine diamond wheel I get an incredible fine finish. Um, there wouldn't be any need to hone these surfaces by hand when I'm done grinding it on this fine wheel. So um, that's the side rake and next we're going to grind the top rake. Okay, I ground the top rake and the side rake both to 7 degrees and now I just need to grind the front relief and I'm going to do this by free, uh, freehand. I'm just holding it up approximately in this position to the grinding wheel and go for it until the front face cleans up all around. So let's go. And that's all it takes. Okay, we have the lathe tool bits ground all around. They came all up pretty good. They are now very sharp and have a an absolute sharp corner here. Um, when you, when in use, um, you would have to break this edge very lightly, or it will break down pretty fast. So. They are ready to use, but need some very minor touch-up. And as they are not for myself, I didn't grind in a chip breaker. Not all people like them and the person who gets these uh, has to do it by himself if he wants a chip breaker. If he doesn't want one, he can use these like they are. I uh, just need to pack them up and send them Hope out. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.